there, it's Anonymous Tea, where we spill the tea anonymously. Hello, 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 everyone. Hello, YouTubers. Hope you guys are all having an amazing day today, sending good vibes, sending positivity, sending blessings, and good energy to each and every single one of you. Thank you so much for tuning in. So today we are talking TGIF, all of the latest, Tasha K Space, Funky Dineva wants no parts of this, Claudia Jordan's latest statement of all of the people speaking on the drama, true, false, or, or whatever, and we're going to talk about all of it. I gave you guys 24 hours. I said no TGIF yesterday. We'll, we'll give you a break and we'll come back and we'll reconvene, right? Uh, but it's a top, it's a trending topic, you guys. It's a trending story. And, and the fact that there is so much money involved, right? The fact that there's so much money involved, at least a half a million involved, at least nearly a million involved, right? It's a lot for three people, you guys, for three people. And it's completely in imploded and we got to talk about it right so everybody like i said was looking for funky dineva's response and uh he basically said he doesn't want to get involved with it he basically feels like once his contract ended you know at the end of december he was over it he was done right he sees you know several videos he said upwards of 900 youtube videos i don't know if it's that many <laughs> that's talking about uh this but nonetheless i uh, you know basically said that people some people are spreading misinformation uh some people are not being accurate with their stories uh and then he made another interesting comment right he says he's obviously friends with al we know that by the impromptu phone call that took place in the middle of his live uh and then he said that he has no relationship with claudia jordan you guys but also doesn't have any issues with her as well. Like, at one point in time, this was not the case. At one point in time, y'all was cool. I, I have no relationship. That That is the answer. I have nothing negative to say. I have no, 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 nothing, like, you know, to do with her or whatever. Well, you're kind of telling the people, uh, you know, what it is, right? And then you said you're friendly with Armand Wiggins, you guys. Uh, but basically said for, you know, all of the YouTubers that are that are new out here, that are, you know, uh, getting their content out about the TGIF to just not, you know, make anything up and to have accurate information that they are reporting on. Uh, he calls out Tasha K, said Tasha K was lying on him, and he said that he never got fired, and also said Tasha K was lying about their salaries, uh, you know, by saying that everybody had different salaries, and saying that the salaries were based on popularity. He's trying to say that Tasha K pulled that out of her bleep, <laughs> and came out of there, and said that, so nonetheless, uh, you know, Basically, he said that there's enough information there. If you know where to look, there's enough information on what the real tea is regarding all of this. And it's right there, easily available for you, right? And essentially, he said that even he's available enough to, hey, if you want to fill in any gaps, if you want to call him or text him and, and, and ask Funky Dineva any type of things to validate your receipts, he's available. And he'll give you permission, apparently, to also utilize his name and his, you know, commentary and all of that to, you know, add to whatever, right? But basically, he was like, I'm, I'm going to give you at least this, right? So he says that essentially, I, while he wants nothing to do with the show, while he left the show and everything else, but he said he feels that the show just completely imploded because nobody was getting along. Everybody was fighting, you know, and essentially it made his decision easy to leave the show because he felt there was always some new drama every day there was always some new chaos every single day and it just got exhausting everybody had a new grievance about something uh he then said people were acting quote unquote stupid with the dinero with the money and he said he doesn't have time for that right he's like you can have all this drama you can have all this stress right so a couple things on that right the funky dineva the reason why people are inserting you and talking about you as it relates to all of this is number one this blew up when your speakerphone call with al reynolds went viral right because 
prior to that, none of us would have known that Al Reynolds was really pissed off at the roast at that TGIF Friday episode, right? So, so nonetheless, him even just saying one curse word was, was a shock to many of us because because we've never heard him cuss before, right? So, therefore, with that being said, uh, that turned a new spotlight onto the show as we're trying to figure out, okay, what's going to happen from here? Is this the cause of the show being canceled? Is did this roast end the show? Or is this going to open up Pandora's box on other issues? And the other reason, Funky Dineva, people are adding your name to this is because you were the last girl host. You have a replacement now, but people are trying to see what the similarities and what the differences are if this has always just been this type of work environment. It, it hasn't always just been these people were this messy, but the one thing I will say is nothing like this ever spilled into the show. Now, you've been completely unfiltered in your opinion, and there had been backlash at times, but it's never been, and if, you, well, no, 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 let me take that back. There were a few times that you did drag Claudia Jordan, like, out of nowhere, just coming for, you know, the rumors and stuff about her past. There were a few times that you just, you just let have, right? But you never let any corporate or inside, you know, Fox Soul drama spill into the show, Right? And that is where a lot of people are like, okay, how long has this been going on? Is this why Funky Lab? Like, what, like what is everybody's trying to fill in those particular gaps and see has this always been toxic, right? So that's why that's the two reasons they're inserting you. Uh, had we not known about that Al Reynolds call that went viral and all the back black blogs like na the Neighborhood Talk and others, and also your own history with the show. And the difference between you and your replacement. And also, number three, I forgot, Tasha K inserted you as well, right? Whether you wanted to be inserted or not. She inserted you because wanted to reference at one point in time, you guys had some sort of a friendship or some type of camaraderie to where you confided in each other and stuff or whatever, right? But clearly that's not the case anymore, right? So that was that. Uh, after that... There was a space, a Twitter space, you guys, that Tasha K hosted. Um, I believe she had some other YouTubers on there, um, such as Sean Davy Wade and, and Jovi Beauty and um, a few others. Also, Al's best friend was on there again. <laughs> He's on the Wiley Show. He's been here, uh, you know, in this Tasha K space. And my takeaway, really the main thing that was, uh, you know, said in there was the allegation that the contracts are up for Claudia Jordan and Al Reynolds. And again, no receipts provided to validate this. And I am just trying to figure out, so, so you're just assuming that because Funky Dineva said that they offered him another contract, you're just assuming that Claudia Jordan and Al's contracts are slated to end now? I don't know about that, right? We don't know. We, w they could be in negotiations now for all we know, right? But that was one of the allegations, that their contracts was up. But why would you have a planned vacation from the show, a planned hiatus from the show, if your contract's up? That would mean, basically, if your contract's up now, and there's been no negotiations, and there's no renewal, then the last episode with Lunell and, and the birthday rose well, would effectively be it. Right? Because we had no show, obviously, last... We haven't had a new show since last Thursday. So, nonetheless, I, you're trying to imply that the show's over? If, if nobody, if Al and Claudia Jordan don't have a contract, is what you're alleging. It's not going to be a situation where they're going to come to work for free. Right? There would have to be some negotiations. But I don't know. I, I don't know. There's something there. Right? There's something there. And then there were some weird allegations about Claudia's personal life that, that's completely irrelevant to the show. Nothing to do with the show. Um, Al Reynolds' best friend, again, spoke on his behalf, said that 
at least to him, you know, Al Reynolds never said anything disrespectful about Claudia Jordan or Armand Wiggins to his face. He reiterated what I said in a previous video when he was on The Wiley Show, basically felt as though um, he still is trying to basically imply that Claudia Jordan is the one that put the battery in Lunell's back to ask the questions about Star Jones. And then, of course, uh, it has come out, and this is also alleged, that they're uh, due to the details of Al Reynolds and Star Jones' divorce, that they're not supposed to be discussing each other. So that's why they're claiming the episode was taken down. However, that is not the reason that the episode was taken down for the birthday rose, right? Because that was all corporate related things that they're going to have to look into and see whether or not there's any inappropriate relationships uh, with anybody in the staff at Fox Soul, with any of the co-hosts uh, that could be, you know, why there's so much chaos taking place behind the scenes, right? And so then as well, some people... And again, it's so funny because every platform, there's a, there's a different team, right? There, there's, a, there's a team, Al Reynolds, that's going to be like, hey, this is all Claudia Jordan's fault. And, you know, Armand Wiggins got set up to take the bait and he should know better. But again, he allegedly always sabotages his relationship. So this is their opportunity to just go in, right? And then there are some people who are... Team Armand Wiggins, although I'm not really seeing too much of that, uh, they're basically trying to diminish uh, him doing the birthday roast and basically just excusing it that he's a YouTuber, he does like stuff like this all the time. And um, however, he was kind of like reading, uh, you know, as if it were a script, as if. So I don't know. Whereas I felt like the other birthday roast, it seemed as though Al Reynolds and Claudia Jordan, they were very much off the cuff right and just said whatever came to their mind or whatever or even they may have rehearsed their own um you know whatever but it came from a more authentic place than this script that it looks like somebody was like listen this is go time let's drag al reynolds <laughs> like you know and, and so so we had all of that right and then of course we had when claudia jordan was in the chat you guys last uh you know <laughs> She was in the chat just spilling tea, just having screenshots of, of like of, you know, saying, hey, uh, Al Reynolds tried to pin me and Armand Wiggins against each other, was gossiping about both of us to, you know, each of us. And then when her and Armand, you know, compared notes, they realized Al was the common denominator and they decided to team up and be cool, right? But there's still people who are speculating that Claudia Jordan is the mastermind behind all of this. But here's the thing on that, right? Here's where there's a hole in that story. If this is quote-unquote Claudia Jordan's show, why would she want to ruin her own show? Why would she want to implode? her own show why would that be a benefit to her when this is the show that she pitched to fox soul and because of whatever reasons the powers that be that cocktails with queens ended the uh, the next part of that was tjf was going to five days a week that it was going to be a full-time show a daily show so why go through all of that trouble just to blow it up just to blow everything up in smoke. I don't buy that part of it, right? I don't buy that part that Claudia Jordan wants the show to fail. And Claudia Jordan wants the show to be canceled, right? At the end of the day, it's a check for her. At the end of the day, it's a job for her. And at the end of the day, per her own words, she said this show is her baby. So, so why would she want that to end? So that's the part as far as Armand's roast where the accusations are that uh, Al Reynolds is trying to get the show canceled and he referenced, of course, that he's not allowed to talk about Al Reynolds' marriage to Star Jones or he might get fired, kind of confirming the tea that obviously there's some other uh, reasons as to why he should not be discussing Star Jones there, right, and her marriage to Al Reynolds. Uh, so all of that to say... It was very HR coded in a lot of the things that was taking place that a lot of times most of us in our real jobs, whether it's corporate, whether it's blue collar, whatever it is, right? 
we don't really we're really not privy to this right usually if there's drama for the most part it's usually just amongst the people involved people never hardly ever put it on display unless somebody leaks that information right and that, unless somebody exposes it or they don't like the direction something is going about a complaint or an issue then you find out about it but a lot of times even if there is a huge issue and there's an issue with co-workers or somebody trying to sabotage each other usually there's paperwork in play to say listen you're not allowed to discuss the details of this event and why this event happened you're going to sign this document or you're going to you know write this letter of your account of everything that you saw happen or you're going to sign this nda and we're going to never discuss this again that's usually the case that's why a lot of these you know issues and things that happen with other companies major corporations a lot of times we don't hear about it unless somebody wants it out there to paint another air narrative or they want sympathy other thing that al's best friend was saying on the space is trying to say that they were upset uh that al reynolds was upset that an episode of tjf i guess a couple of weeks ago mimicked uh al reynolds show the people's court or uh, on his youtube and I'm a little confused about that, but that's what they're alleging. I don't know what that has to do with anything. Um, and if that is the straw that broke the camel's back, that it was like, oh my gosh, I have to end the show somehow. Uh, <laughs> like, like, that's just crazy, right? So that was the gist of the live. There, there was a lot more, there was a lot more other stuff, conjecture, a lot more opinions and things people have, because obviously this is an opportunity for some people who didn't like claudia jordan anyways to go in on her regardless right and, and just paint the narrative regardless but you have to take a step back whether you like or dislike any of these people right for me like i always say none of this is personal i don't know these people i don't have any personal relationships with these people right so i'm reacting this just from the perspective of how is two hundred and fifty thousand dollars just going down the drain like this and I don't care if you like me or not. Why can't we work together for eight hours out the week and, uh, you know, continue to get this money? We don't got to hang out. We don't got to see each other outside of work. You don't need to know my personal business. But it seems, you know, in this industry, just overall, reality TV, celebrities, all of these things, there's very few people that you can really say really are genuine and really are a true friend and really have your back no matter what what seems to happen now is everyone wants to be in competition with each other especially people that have the same you know job as you same career you know trajectory as you and all these things you think you're friends you think that you're all cool and you find out they're plotting your demise behind your back so I get why Claudia was frustrated and just let it off in the comments. I, I totally get it. Would I have done it? No. But I get it from Claudia's perspective. I understand anytime there's been an issue at Fox Soul, it always comes back to, oh, this is Claudia Jordan's fault. Claudia Jordan, you know, spearheaded this, right? So so she's obviously over that narrative, right? And, uh, you know, again, wants to come out and defend herself. However... I wouldn't have said anything, right? And although Al Reynolds is being quiet, he, he does have somebody speaking on his behalf, right? So it has been on multiple platforms speaking on his behalf, right? So it's like, how can you be mad if you're alleging that Claudia Jordan blocked you on social media, but if she feels that you're, you know, saying some things that are obviously going to be slanted, how can you have a real conversation about the details of X, Y, and Z if you're only going to push a certain narrative, right? There has to be nuance in, in hearing every single side of the story and also finding out the actual truth. Which brings me to Claudia Jordan's uh, Instagram story about 12 hours or so ago from me, um, you know, discussing this on this video. And it says, the way these she devils and he devils have been coming for my spirit every day lately, tells me one thing, I'm about to receive a super big blessing with uh, stars and praying emoji. 
this always happens before I get blessed. My faith gets tested before the blessing. So are y'all done yet or not? Nah? I can take it all and I'm built to withstand your petty attacks. Remember, I'm a true phoenix, right? So, so that is coming from Claudia Jordan herself. And here's the thing. For me, like I said, none of this is personal. We don't need to person. I don't need to personally attack anybody, right? I mean, I know for some people, they may have an axe to grind, so they're just going to go in and say whatever, right? But for me, I'm just looking at it from the perspective of how does $250,000 allegedly go down the drain like this? And, and the other side is until there's official confirmation, whether it's directly from Fox or Fox Soul or otherwise on the future of this show, we really can't say for certain that it's done. What I think is happening is there's some things that are kind of in the balance. There's some things that need to be checked out. Some I's need to be dotted and some T's need to be crossed to make sure this never happens again. But it's going to be very interesting what is, what's going to come of this, right? Is this going to be a situation, say the show does come back in a week or two weeks from now or whatever, that, you know, we're not going to have the same co-host? That, you know, Al may say, hey, I, I'll come back, but I'm not working with Armand or, or, you know, or I'm coming back, but I want nothing to do with Claudia or, or, or things like that. Is that where we're at right now? For $250,000, allegedly, for eight hours of work, you guys. Like I said, have you guys ever read the book, The Four Hour, uh, <laughs> the four hour Work Week, or, or The 12 Week, um, A Year Work Week, you guys? Like, this is crazy. But this is what happens, you guys, unfortunately, right? And, and, it, and it's so, there's so many similarities to a lot of the people that are involved uh, when you, even though Funky Night even doesn't want to be involved, he has the history and the connection to the show, and he's friends with Al Reynolds, and the viral phone call, right? But in this comparison, Funky Dineva, Armand Wiggins, and Al Reynolds, you guys, have all come to, you know, basically we've all kind of gotten to know who they are and their platform had elevated from a black woman. <laughs> like, like, essentially, that's what happened, right? It was Tasha K, you know, um, with Armand. We didn't know who Mar I believe Armand had like 500 subscribers or something. Then like in a week went up to like 20,000. Uh, but then he's had his own things, right? He's had his falling outs with people with, you know, Jason Lee and Cardi B and others, right? And of course, Tasha K. So he's had, he's had those fallouts, right? And then we have, of course, Funky Dineva, who, again, he, you know, we got to see the content of him and Michelle Atielian. Uh, You know, shout out to her. And then everything went to H E W O, Right? And that just completely blew up in smoke, right? But we've also seen Funky Dineva get several opportunities, you know, with Love and Hip Hop, with Sister Circle, uh, you know, be appearing on Married to Medicine, being cool with Quad at one point, being cool with Dr. Heavenly, even having a messy show with uh, Dr. Heavenly that it seems that Carlos King has really adopted for himself. And now with Fox Soul, right? Even if, you know, you're saying, hey, there's too much drama, there's too much this, there's too much X, Y, and Z, it still technically is a startup company, right? It still technically is brand new, and it just seems as though maybe some of the people that Funky Dineva thought had his back or were either just not there or they must have switched up on him or they just felt that whatever he wanted to negotiate for a larger salary that they said that that wasn't going to be that wasn't going to cut it right or maybe something was promised to him right we don't know right but um you know again there, there's just been so many times that these opportunities and of course we didn't know who al rose was without star jones you guys regardless right we did not know of his existence prior to star jones and you know he's made appearances on reality tv shows uh you know showed up as you know jennifer williams's bestie from basketball lives as nini's bestie from real housewives of atlanta so he's been out here 
in these streets, right? And also, you know, again, still does teaching, does all these other jobs on the side, right? But also has a relationship in media. And this opportunity presents itself. Allegedly, you guys were all at a wedding and said, hey, I've got this idea. We can make this happen. We can make this work. And the rest is history, guys. But how many times, those of you who watch my Love and Marriage Huntsville content, and, and even when I relate it to Married to Madison, how many times do we have to see the same thing happen over and over and over again? Where somebody has the connect, somebody has the plug to say, hey, I can get you on a show. I can get you on a reality show. I can get you on a talk show as a co-host. I can make this happen for you. I've got the connection. I got the green light uh, from the head hot shows, right? And, and you're thing, and you're you know negotiating. You're talking about the money, and everybody is on board. Everybody is excited, and then the cameras start rolling, you guys. And initially, you think everything is good. But then on social media, you start to see who likes who, who prefers who out of the cast, who thinks is the better co-host out of everybody, who they feel, you know, makes TGIF, who they feel brings down TGIF. And then you start to see a change. You start to see a shift with certain people who, you know, feel a certain type of way. But instead of embracing the constructive criticism versus the trolling, they take it out on each other. They want to make some, they, they, instead of, you know, saying, hey, maybe I feel you should have researched this particular topic better, right? Or maybe I feel that you're being too, uh, you know, male identified in this answer and you need to look at it from a woman's perspective or look at it why this is happening or have all of the facts about the situation before speaking on it. Instead of that, they're, they're just going to take it out on someone else. And be like, well, maybe if I remove you out the way, uh, I can thrive. I, I can be the baddest. I can be the star. <laughs> like, 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 that's how screwed up it, it, we are right now in this current times of competition and reality TV and celebrities and, and, and athletes and everything else. Everyone wants to be the headline, but they don't want the negativity or the problems that come with that, that come with being the main character, right? You're always going to have haters, you guys. I have never been in any situation where there was not somebody hating. Never. I would like for everybody to be genuine. I would love that more than anything, but that's why I'm solo dolo, you guys. I can count the number of my, like, real friends on, on one hand. Really less than one hand, right? That I consider, like, my real legitimate friends. Because... There's been so much chaos. There's been so much fakery and two-faced behavior and people thinking that you're clueless and you have no idea what they're saying about you behind your back. But there's always a mutual friend that is going to give it to you raw and tell you the real. And so it's like, oh, so somebody that I, th I thought was my ride or die is moving like this behind my back? It is acting like this behind my back? Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 right? We're not having that. But unfortunately, I, I would love it in a perfect world if they could resolve this and the show could come back after, I presume, the 4th of July holiday. But to be honest with you, to be frank with you, with how dire the friendship, the termination of, you know, Claudia Jordan and Al's relationship in particular... I can't say for certain even that could be salvaged enough for them to fake it on camera for eight hours a week. Or eight hours, you know, total, right? Uh, you obviously have the five hours of the show, but however many hours is prep time or meetings of, of what you're going to discuss or any type of post-show things or whatever, right? I would love for them to get this together because this is a huge bag and one of the easiest jobs ever, you guys. Any of us would love to have this opportunity, right? But like I said, I know how to keep it professional and not keep anything, that any drama or anything behind the scenes, not letting that spill over to the show. Because ultimately, what's best for the show is if all of us are on one accord together, whether we like each other or not. There was a chemistry there. And now all of that is completely imploded, has blown up, is on fire, is a catastrophe. 
and we don't know whether or not this can be fixed. We don't know whether or not this could be salvaged. But as of now, there's no official announcement from Fox or from Fox Soul on what the future is. Regardless of what Tasha K and other people, you know, are saying. We officially do not have a statement that says for certain the show's over. That says for certain the show is, you know, coming back, at, you know, on this date, right? We don't know. Everything is up in the air right now because everything happened so abruptly with the back-to-back -back episodes of the <laughs> Star Jones thing with Lunell and then this birthday rose. And even his friend, our Reynolds friend, confirmed, hey, you got these episodes taken down. You were a part of the reason, right? You, you had that, right? So, again, I wish the best for everybody involved. It, it's not personal. I just don't understand for the life of me. If I had an opportunity to just make 250k off of one gig, off of one bag alone, and I don't have to do anything outrageous, I don't have to, you know, it, the, some of the horror stories you hear about these opportunities on TV and, and music industry of how inappropriate these people are and want you to do things against your morals and values to secure the bag. No, 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 no. It very much in the instance of this was very much, hey, I had the connections to pitch this show. They loved it. Let me employ my friends. And, and then, <laughs> Bucky Dineve is not even calling you a friend right now. And, and you're saying you and Al Reynolds fell out a long time ago and, and you unfollowed him, right? So it is just crazy that it was even able to be kept under wraps for this long. If things are this bad at Fox Soul behind the scenes, right? So we'll continue to monitor this. Like I said, if Tasha K, even though Tasha K said she was going to talk about this once, uh, she's talked about it a few more times and has had, you know, additional commentary on this because she knows it's a top story. She's a, she's still a blogger at the end of the day. So she is going to get the message out that she wants to get the narrative she wants out one way or the other, you guys. But nonetheless, we have to consider the sources of everything, right? We have to consider the facts that we know. And really, for the most part, if it came out of Claudia Jordan's mouth, um, if it came out of Armand Wiggins' mouth, then we heard kind of what Al Reynolds said out of his mouth, but the rest is kind of being funneled through, you know, this best friend of his. So nonetheless, I, you know, we're going to have to wait and see. And, and just react to the facts that we have, right? And dissect from some of the things Tasha K said, okay, is this real? Is, is this legitimate? And, and, and go from there. Because there was a lot of explosive claims on that space, you guys, that I have not heard anywhere else, right? So like I said, we'll continue to see where this goes. We'll continue to find out if there is any more developments, any more announcements, any more shade being thrown at people, any more crazy uh, stories out of nowhere that, that is not verified by any receipts. We'll talk about it. But we'll give accurate commentary, you guys. And for me, like I said, finally, again, I'm team no one. I feel this could have been resolved a long time ago. Things unfortunately escalated, but I just cannot get past fumbling at least a $250,000 back for one of the easiest jobs ever, you guys. To literally get paid a quarter of a million dollars to talk celebrity news and gossip, have an occasional interview with people, meet some of the people that you might have admired as a kid, and literally get to be faced or zoom to zoom with them on, on a show. You don't even have to clock in and, or go into an office to see these people. Everything's via Zoom. So that's the other piece. It's like you guys don't even need to be near each other. And this is all popping off. It's way too much chatter at a corporation, you know, for this to be this messy. So there's that. Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments. Please do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you're notified the moment I post new content on my channel. And with that being said, I'll talk to you guys again very soon.